It's what you do that counts. It's that looks don't matter. Whoever told you that you just need to love yourself the way you are, lied to you. It is time for a reality check. Your looks matter. If you look more feminine and elegant, you get treated better. It is what it is. We live in a patriarchy, and instead of becoming sad about it, we secure our bag. Um, I mean, in our feminine receiving energy as we belong to the pampered sisterhood. Hi, ladies. Welcome to the Feminine Retreat. I'm so happy to have you here. So we have come to the conclusion that looks matter. And the only way you will have your glow up like Anne Hathaway in The Princess Diaries, you have to have an intervention. Just like drug addicts have an intervention, you will have a beauty intervention with yourself. No worries, I will help you step by step. I am going to share six aspects of your appearance you need to evaluate, modify, and optimize in order to truly be confident in your skin. That said, ladies, please keep in your mind that the theme of today's video is personalization. So buckle in because this is your specific plan of how you're going to become the best feminine version of yourself physically in 2024. Before we start, let me express my perspective on physical appearance. I believe that nurturing and enhancing our external appearance is a powerful expression of self-love. Our souls inhabit physical bodies, a blessing from God or source. So why not optimize, elevate, and strive to make it the best it can be? In no way is pouring into your appearance shallow, so don't you dare to say that to yourself. Ladies, taking care of yourself is an act of self-love and self-respect. And that being said, you are part of the pampered sisterhood Otherwise, you wouldn't have been here, and we love to learn and elevate ourselves. So while you focus on internal growth, isn't it only fitting to let your external appearance reflect that journey? Let me know in the comments if you agree. Which brings me to the second point. I believe it's crucial to master the skill of showcasing your internal value through your outward presentation. After all, what remains unseen often goes unnoticed. This serves as the outline for today's video, and I encourage you to stick around until the end. By doing so, you'll receive a specific to-do list to implement the discussed concepts. I've already compiled the key takeaways for you, so there's no need to pause and take notes. Just relax, sit back, and enjoy the video. Let's kick off by taking a closer look at your baseline. Think of it as your starting point on the journey to self-improvement and a radiant glow up. It's important to understand your default setting, much like the foundation of a house before any renovations. Imagine a friend telling you she wants to become a competitive bodybuilder. In order to achieve that, she needs to have a fat percent of below 20. So what will she do? She starts by assessing her baseline fat percent level by using skinfold calipers. Her result is 30%. She acknowledges that she is not where she wants to be and makes a plan to get below the 20%. This self-awareness, driven by self-love, becomes the catalyst for positive change. Similarly, in the realm of your physical glow up, it's about understanding where you currently stand without attaching negative labels. So whether you feel like a solid four, a confident five, or even believe you're rocking an eight, take a moment to reflect on your baseline. Picture it as a snapshot of your current self, ready to embark on your feminine glow up journey. This self-reflection rooted in self-love, yes, I need to highlight the self-love part, sets the stage for the transformative journey ahead. After all, knowing where you're starting from is the first step towards the best feminine version of you. Now, let's delve into the external shifts that can elevate your baseline and contribute to a radiant feminine glow up using the AOR method. AOR stands for Assess, Optimize, Refine. This is the process we are going to be using, you are going to be using, to facilitate your external glow up. Of course, sprinkled with self-love and positivity all over. And honestly, this approach is genuinely transformative as it gives your glow up a distinct and personalized touch. It enables you to tailor the process to suit your unique needs, considering both your strengths and areas for improvement. This is precisely why the first step, the intervention process, holds such significance. I encourage you to embark on this journey without resorting to negative self-perceptions. Instead, focus on assessing, refining, and adapting six key categories that collectively shape your entire physical appearance. Number one is skin. 
Your skin significantly influences your overall appearance and confidence. Who doesn't want glowy, flawless skin? Start by evaluating your skin's current condition. Identify its strengths, weaknesses, and the specific goals you aim to achieve. Is your skin uneven, prone to acne, textured, or affected by hyperpigmentation or acne? If so, determine whether they're on the surface or underneath. Is your skin dry or lacking radiance? You get the point. Assess, assess, assess. Once you've assessed your skin, modify your skincare routine to align with your goals. Optimize the routine to suit your specific needs. Understanding your skin type is fundamental. For instance, if you have sensitive acne-prone skin, like me, you might need to be cautious about intense treatments. I learned that what works for others may not work for me, leading me to optimize my routine. So, no, I don't use 10 serums per day. Identifying your skin type, whether it's combination, oily, dry, normal, or sensitive, guides you in choosing the right skincare treatments and products. You can consider factors like moisturization, hydration, oil control, and targeting acne in your routine. While general tips include exploring treatments like microneedling and facial peels, tailor them to your skin type and goals. For me, the use of niacinamide, 10% plus zinc, 1% serum, tretinoin, and taking vitamin A, B5, and omega-3 supplements were an absolute game changer. Also, a general tip is to always put sunscreen on even if you have dark skin. It is an absolute myth that we dark skin women cannot get sunburned. If you have your routine, then you are not done yet. Some things will work, some things will not. So it is important for you to figure out what works for you, which is the third part of the method, the refining part. Let's dive into the second part of the glow up intervention, body care. It's time to show some love to our skin beyond the face. Also, here the same AOR method applies. In 2024, I'm all about advocating for comprehensive body skin care because, let's face it, focusing solely on the face while neglecting the body doesn't cut it. Our bodies deserve attention too. It's time to ditch the decrepit, dull, and ashy look, and I'm making it a personal goal. Are you on board with me? When it comes to body skin care, consider incorporating a retinol into your routine. Here are two suggestions. Either mix a few drops of your chosen active, like AHA or BHA, into your moisturizer or opt for a pre-mixed product. Personally, I enjoy customizing my mix, giving me control over the ingredients and their quantities. Unlike the delicate nature of facial skin, our bodies can handle more. However, on my body, I have dry skin, so I only have hot showers at night and cold ones in the morning. The cold showers help with circulation, closing my pores and keeping my skin soft. And not importantly, it really benefits my mental health, but that is out of the scope for this video. I also incorporate dry brushing and body exfoliation with a retinol more than three or four times a week. On the days that I don't use retinol, I will use a salicylic acid body spray on my back. Bye, Bacne. Post exfoliation, I indulge in a little body slugging, slathering shea butter and coconut oil all over my body. It gets absorbed into the skin, leaving me waking up feeling hydrated, glowy, and supple. Who wouldn't want that bounce to the skin? Now let's talk about exercise. No more excuses like, I'm ugly, or I'm gross. If you're not exercising or moving your body, that's on you. Find what suits you whether it's hitting the gym with headphones, embracing strength training, enjoying a class, or going for a low impact activity. Personally, I'm all about a podcast power power walk, a perfect combo, little dance breaks during the day, and going to the gym two times a week. Lastly, in the body category, evaluate your approach to body hair. Laser removal is on my radar this year. If you're like me and find shaving or waxing exhausting, laser removal might be worth exploring. However, the theme here is personalization. If body hair makes you feel great, embrace it. This is all about suggestions and outlining options to elevate yourself from your baseline. It's your journey, your rules. Let's make it personalized and fabulous. Number three is your hair. I was a bit lazy with my natural hair, but not anymore. 
One of my 2024 goals is actually to make my hair grow longer and thicker. So I had to use the AOR formula to assess my hair, which is 3C mixed 4A till my mid back, full on top, but thin on the ends. But enough about me, let's use the AOR formula on your hair. First assess, is it thin? Is it frizzy? Is it curly? Is it dead straight? Does it lack volume? Evaluate what is going on with your hair, what are its weaknesses, and then figure out what your hair goals are. Would you like it to be less frizzy? Would you like to just learn more about how to style your thin hair? Maybe you're okay with the thin hair and you just want to style it. Maybe you're not okay with the thin hair and you want to get extensions to add volume. Maybe you want to go the natural route and learn some home remedies for hair growth. Figure out what your hair is, what the weaknesses are of it, and then evaluate what are you trying to accomplish with your hair. Then we're going to optimize our hair care routine to suit that goal. If it's frizzy and you want longer hair, consider looking into hair care routines that are moisturizing and hydrating. If you haven't already been using a silk pillowcase or a silk bonnet to control the frizz and protect your hair, then it is about time, sis. That has honestly been a game changer for my hair. I wake up and my hair is laid. It's definitely a game changer. And by the way, you can have multiple goals, obviously. You just have to figure out what your starting point is and what your hair goals are, and then optimizing your routine to fit that and modifying what you're doing to your hair in order to accomplish the hair goal. Number four is style. Style is a crucial aspect of personal expression. How you choose to dress has a significant impact on your interactions and the opportunities that come your way. In an upcoming video, I'll delve deeper into this, emphasizing the importance of personal style. I won't mislead you. The way you dress plays a role in the type of people you attract and the situations you find yourself in. It's not just about aesthetics. It affects the energy you emit to the world. So pay attention to your personal style. I always recommend finding your own unique style. And for me, a classy and chic aesthetic is timeless and universally flattering. I've received requests to showcase styles for curvier women, and I want to assure you that a classy and elegant style looks great on everyone, regardless of body shape. The key is finding what resonates with you personally. When it comes to clothing, the most important thing is that it suits you. Avoid buying things simply because they are on sale or trendy. Choose clothes that fit well. If it doesn't give you that heck yes feeling, it's a no. Ill-fitting clothes not only impact your confidence, but also project a sense of chaos. Opt for clothes that make you feel confident and comfortable, aligning with your personal style. Number five is makeup. I believe that makeup is not there to make you look like someone else. Although it can be, I see it more as a way to elevate your unique beauty. So again, assess, assess and assess and personalize. Applying a similar makeup style to a woman with big eyes and a woman with small eyes might not complement both well. In general, bigger eyes can handle more makeup. So if you apply the same look to a woman with smaller eyes, it could potentially overpower her. So it's essential to identify your unique features and determine how to enhance and highlight them. Whether it's addressing small eyes, thin lips, or a desire for a different nose appearance, there are various approaches like contouring or non-surgical options. While I don't endorse specific procedures, I believe in pursuing changes that boost personal confidence. True confidence should precede any aesthetic modifications, as relying on such changes to gain confidence often leads to unfulfilled expectations. If considering cosmetic enhancements, whether surgical or non-surgical like fillers, I suggest building internal confidence first. This ensures that any external changes are made for personal satisfaction rather than seeking validation. Don't let makeup hide your best features. Instead, optimize and enhance them to bring out your uniqueness and shine. Reflecting on my own experiences, I used to strive to fit in by modifying my distinct features. Over time, I've come to appreciate that standing out and looking different can be a tremendous blessing. Being unique catches attention and becomes a breath of fresh air for those encountering someone with a distinctive appearance. The key is to never conceal your best features to conform, 
but to modify them in a way that optimizes and highlights, allowing you to stand out confidently. Thank you for joining my TED Talk. Number six is hygiene. There are some rules that I need to get off my chest that I truly believe every single person should be following. You need to be using a tongue scraper. We don't want to be those pretty ladies with dragon breath. Yuck. So go get a tongue scraper, whitening your teeth. That can be a huge level up, a huge game changer for your mouth. Scrubbing your lips with a sugar scrub. You can make them at home, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of olive oil. Scrub your lips and seal them with Vaseline. That said, you need to be applying Vaseline or a lip mask every single day. There should be no questions asked. Moisturized lips, game changer. Trust me, hydrated lips are a game changer. It's the little things that can make you look your absolute best. And we're not talking about those tiny details enough. So from now on, no questions asked. Moisturize those lips. Another thing that you should absolutely have is a signature scent. Find a perfume. Always, always be wearing perfume. A daytime perfume when you're going out. A nighttime perfume when you're going out in the evening, when you're doing a date night, when you're going on a date, when you're hanging out with friends. You need to be smelling good 24-7. A last principle that I want to share with you is I am all about doing the most so that I can do the least, if that makes sense. When I do the most, it's on a Sunday or it's the night before. I wake up and I wake up looking beautiful, effortless, everything amazing, but it's because I'm doing the most the night before and every single Sunday. For example, curl your eyelashes at night six times, take an eyebrow brush and dip it in Vaseline or castor oil. Voila, you will go to bed and wake up with fabulous eyes. So that is your comprehensive video guide to glowing up in 2024 physically. If you want the downloadable version, full routine, grab it down below. And if you're ready for the internal glow up, watch this video next.